In this video, I want to explain what we mean by random variables and probability distributions. And to explain the concept of a random variable, I'm going to use a particular example, which is going to be to do with tomorrow's weather. And tomorrow's weather, by the very nature of the fact it's tomorrow, we are uncertain about what the weather will be tomorrow. And any time which we are uncertain about something, we describe that uncertainty using probability distributions. So to begin to start thinking about this problem, we're going to create what's known as a random variable x, which is equal to 1 if the weather tomorrow is sunny and 0 otherwise. So that is if the weather is not sunny. And as I said, this variable x is what we call a random variable. So what do we mean by that? Well, actually, technically, just to be clear here, this is what's known as a discrete random variable because the outcomes are a finite number of possibilities. They're just 0 or 1 in this case. But what do we mean by a random variable? Well, a random variable is just a parameter or a variable which associates a numeric outcome with potential states of the world. So here, if the state of the world is sunny, we say that our random variable x is equal to 1, otherwise x is equal to 0. The random here, importantly, doesn't mean what we would colloquially mean as random, in that it doesn't represent things that are necessarily unpredictable. It just means that we are uncertain about something. The amount of uncertainty we have is governed by probability distributions. Just how uncertain we are about a given situation is described by entities which are known as probability distributions. And these probability distributions are just sort of mathematical things that associate probabilities with different potential values of our random variable. So in our weather example, a probability distribution here would be a discrete one, and it would associate a probability with the weather tomorrow being sunny and another probability with it not being sunny. And as I've sort of hinted at here, probability distributions can take two flavors. One of them is for discrete random variables. So our case here of the weather being sunny or not is a discrete random variable because our random variable can only be a finite number of possible outcomes. In general, we can have a discrete random variable that can take on, let's say, the integer values or sort of any discrete scale that we like. And the sort of y-axis here for a discrete probability distribution just represents the probability of that particular outcome. So for a discrete distribution, we can sort of imagine that our sort of probability distribution as looking like a kind of bar chart which looks something like this. And then what we can do is we could say, well, okay, what's the probability that we get a one? And we just read that off on our sort of vertical axis here. And we would just represent that as P of one, where P is what is known as a probability distribution function, which associates a probability for a discrete case with a potential outcome. So here, P of one is just the same as the probability of one. There are, however, different types of probability distribution, those that are associated with continuous random variables. So, for example, imagine that we were measuring the weight of an individual, or their height, or the return of a stock, for example. Here, our probability distribution function can look like this, or something like this, for example. It's a continuous function here. There's no sort of discrete steps that we have in the top example. And here, the left-hand axis, the vertical axis, doesn't actually represent a probability. It represents something that is known as a probability density. And don't worry if you don't know what that is, because I'll, I'll explain it in due course in another video, but I, I just want to highlight that right now. And here, imagine that we've sort of got a variable that is sort of most of its weights near 50, but it's sort of goes between 40 and 60, say, then what we can do is we can use our probability distribution function here 
to work out the probability density associated with, let's say, 45. And to get that, all we do is we read off the sort of vertical limit here, which would be P of 45, whatever the sort of numerical value of that is. One thing I want to sort of note here is that I use the term probability distribution functions, which is a slight abuse of terminology. Most people, what they do is they use probability mass functions. So that would be sort of probability mass functions to describe the function P, which associates a probability with any one of a number of potential discrete outcomes. So they would call that a probability mass function. And they would call, for the continuous case, they would call that a probability density function. Because now what we're dealing with is something which associates a probability density with any one of a continuous number of potential outcomes. Because Bayes' rule looks the same for both discrete and continuous random variables, I find it useful to use the term probability distribution functions to describe both of these entities, because usually there isn't much ambiguity in these. So in summary, a random variable is just an algebraic quantity that associates a numeric value with a potential outcome in the real world. And that potential outcome can be discrete, as it was for our sort of tomorrow's weather example, or it could be a continuous random variable. For example, let's say we were measuring the weight or the height of an individual. The random part of our random variable doesn't mean the sort of colloquial use of random. What it means is that the thing that we're describing is in some way uncertain. It doesn't mean that what we're describing is entirely unpredictable. To describe the likely values of a random variable, we use objects which are known as probability distributions. For discrete variables, we might get a probability distribution which looks something like that which I've drawn up here in the top right. For continuous ones, we might get something like that which is shown in the bottom right here. The mathematical function which associates a particular value of, in the sort of case of discrete distributions, a probability with a potential outcome and for continuous distributions, a probability density with a particular outcome of a random variable are what are known as probability distribution functions, or, or that's what I call them at least.